There's so much to discover. Work-life balance is bullshit. Oh, I'm learning new stuff every day. Work-life balance is bullshit because if you work <laughs> in love with what you're doing, whether it's shoveling or coming to work or not being at work, but if you're just in it all day, every day, you don't need balance because you get to live every moment balanced. You know, maybe you're at work working on a pool, but maybe you are developing life skills or maybe you're getting a suntan or whatever the case may be. So that work-life balance, I've never had a line. Some people, that go to a job that they don't like, jump in their car in the morning, commute an hour each way to get to their office or their cubicle where they work with people they don't enjoy to go home and then live for the weekend. My thought would be you should enjoy every minute of your life. You don't have to punch a time clock or just go somewhere to exchange your time for money. There are plenty of people that will give you money for doing things that you enjoy, that you can do with people that you enjoy, that you can find fulfillment in each and every day. Doing our work with love, whatever our intention is. Knives sticking out of skulls all over the place. We have Ginzu knives all over here. It's the love that we impart in what we do. Finding the thing that you love to do doesn't mean doing something different at all. It means bringing a fresh perspective to what you do. It's finding the joy in what is and then finding the things that you can add to it to bring even more joy. We're in crucial crunch time. It's reached the point where we kind of just need to just bust it out. What are you most looking forward to on this project? Going, down, going swimming. Essentially, we're hoping to get that liner in this week, and we have a little bit of prep work that goes with that. So we're a bit old school, old fashioned. We still measure our liners by hand. The reason being is because we're building kind of unique products and would rather know for sure that we've measured, hand measured it all the way. So what the process of AB pointing is, is you take two arbitrary points, which would happen to be the end of the tape measures. One we call point A, one we count point B. Measure the distance they between 12 them. feet so as long as we have the distance between them, at any point, the edge of the pool wall is 13 foot seven, and 20 feet, and if we do that at every point along the way, we can put the, put the numbers on the computer and be able to plot out the exact shape of the pool. Once we plot out the exact shape of the pool, then the liner manufacturer can figure out how to build the shape that we want. 25.5, 34.10. foot 36.10 inches. This right here is the secret to hybrid pool building. What I have here is a standard step kit. What I'm doing is I'm using these step kits to create my final flashing. Below this is liner, above this is eco finish. I've chosen to use it to build hybrid, which is a cross between vinyl and gunite. But this really is the key. And getting this right is what makes the whole process work. So how did this ever happen? I had a customer many years ago, loved the idea of a vinyl liner pool, but she wanted a floating table, she wanted all these different features that there was just no way to build in vinyl. And the challenge to me was, how could I build that? So I toyed with this idea, and then I went to a gunite guy and said, if I did this, could I hire you to just shoot a portion? And fortunately for me, he said yes. And that was the beginning. I put my pool in, once I did it once, I realized that was the answer. I can build anything now. And the net result is we've built some pretty crazy interesting things that are technically vinyl liner pools. So as far as I know, I was the first. I won't be the last, I'm sure. There's people out there like me that just love vinyl liner pools and we love everything to do with vinyl. Why not push it to its limits? And that's kind of where we're going.
I, I, don't look at me as a commentator. I'm just kind of uh, helping out where I can, more or less. We work on that fence on Saturday. Got it for most of it connected. Now I'm heading into the pool to work on that hard bottom. But fortunately for us, we have the best hard bottom scraper of all time. Kaylee! There she is. That's our master hard bottom scraper right there. You will not see me scrape hard bottom ever if my life depended on it. I like spreading it. I hate scraping it because it's the most boring thing on the entire planet. So now that we know that she's on the job, it's bound to be an awesome job. When it's 90 freaking degrees outside and you just scrape it in one spot until like for a whole day, a few days, you'll just scrape it. It is annoying. I hate it. It's boring. But you scrape it so the liner can sit on it and there's no rocks or holes or punctures that could enter the liner. Today is a big day. Today is liner day. It's always big news when you're putting a liner in a pool, especially when it's been a long process and there's a lot going on. There's a lot of building still happening, but it feels a whole lot different. It's kind of like when you put in the patio. After you've been working in mud for so long, all of a sudden a patio in just feels really good. Well, the liner is the same way because you've been looking at it for so long and the customers have been looking at it for so long and they're in no hurry. They're they perfect okay with whenever we do it. Well, no, yeah, I'm excited, but I mean, it, I'm in no hurry either. Like when it gets done, it gets done. But for me, it's a big step and that big step just feels really good to do. You can see what an awesome liner looks like in the swimming pool. We put our liner into our pool, so that is very exciting. Now we can get water in it, and the project is finally coming together, and it's super exciting. Bye! And uh, we got to fill it up a little bit, and then Mother Nature's helped uh, a little bit as well. We've had lots of rain the last day and a half, so. As big as the ship is, with all the rain we've gotten, I think we might need to make it bigger and turn it into an arc, because, uh, yeah, there was been times where we thought we might be floating way down here, so. For the pirate pool, I am most looking forward to the big ship. I'm looking forward to the ship. The waterfall and the grotto, and it's gonna be real cool. It's a waterfall? Yeah. It's a waterfall too. Yeah, it's gonna be a waterfall. Like, is, it, is its main purpose just to be a waterfall? Yes, or? yes. Oh, jeez. You didn't know that? No. I'm learning new stuff every day. So there's always an issue of how to make the water look good, where to make the water come out that makes any sense. And we have the four cannons across the front. We want to have water over that opening. I think I finally settled on something like this, where mm. water's coming out of all these different types of things that would have contained fluid of some type and have it all just connect together and then fall into the pool at the top of the waterfall. And then some slate in here and then so the water spills into here and then runs down and falls into the pool. Here's the opening to the grotto right here. So that's what I'm trying to down figure out. What's, that's kind of what it is. We've been struggling for days trying to find a way to hide. This is our plumbing. So yesterday, I put a couple skulls, and then all of a sudden the thought came to me, heads on a silver platter. And I thought that might be apropos to a pirate. Oh my goodness. This is the very first piece I picked up for this project. So I caught wind of it. We weren't even sure we were going to do the project, but they were still trying to work out the details. I was at a flea market, and I thought, does that look piratey or what? So I bought it all that long time ago, knowing that eventually it would be in a pirate project, and here it is. I think it's been a year, just over a year and a half that the project has been in the works. This was something I picked up right away. In its pre-broken state, we have since broken the, chipped the top of it off, which I don't think hurts us too badly. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set it right here. They'll, they'll all be valved every single, a single one of these will have a little valve to be able to throttle them up or down. So as once we get it running, we can determine where we want more water or less water. Part of this is we want to make sure we can see as much of the cool detail as possible from a distance. If 
we had like this, and then we all just kind of pouring out at the same time. Yeah. We could square it up and maybe well, put then, a skull on well, it. Well, that's why I thought we square this up and look, yep. make it look like it's a box on yeah. a funny angle. Yeah. Do that. You want some mud? Um, or do you need the hose first? I, let me, yeah, let me just grab it. Just grab it on the top. Because you can cut so we're just going to see if we can get it to work. That means there's going to be water going through the system that the motor is going to be running. If it doesn't, well then that means that we don't have water running through the system. So when it comes to service, there's basically two parts of the job. There's doing the job, making sure that when you go to a job, that it's better than you know when you got there. And then there's relationship building for the second. Getting to know the person and instilling them with the belief that you're not only competent, but confident in being able to fix the problem and you know that you'll have them uh, up and running in no time. I do, I just kind of like, pluck at wires and like, hmm, hmm, makes it look like I know what I'm doing, but I really don't have a clue. Let there be water. Hey, Yoho, way to go, Yoho! The ship officially became a waterfall when we turned the water on it today. I just think seeing the water coming out of unique places is really cool. That's one thing that we really lack in waterfall construction is the creativity part. Yes, beautiful rock work, stone, but water appears out of nowhere most often. In this case, it's kind of fun to see water tumbling out of barrels and out of bottles and out of different things that make some sense as to why there'd be water there. The first day of my summer vacation. <laughs> yeah? I went out and looked What for a was job. your reaction to seeing this? Oh, it was just awesome. I mean, look at it. It's just like, that is just like stupendous. <laughs> it's just, it's hard to put into words. Am I right? right? Katie wants us to do a vlog for our uh, initial response to the waterfall. I gotta get it right. There we go. And there's Jesse in the picture. I uh, see we're the ones who carved it. Um, trying to fit, uh, plot out a water plan. I know I was looking at it critically. Oh, yeah, so was I. It's really cool to see, but the biggest thing we were doing was like, oh, okay, we need to add mud there, we need to fix that, we gotta keep channeling the water down a specific stream. So yep. it's really so. awesome to see, and now we're able to see what little bit still needs to get done. Yeah, a little fine tuning and finessing we've gotta do. But it is an awesome trickle. <laughs> An awesome flow, <laughs> not a trickle. Yeah. I like the look of all those little things squirt now. Well, I think what, what I think what we learn here is to try to complete a thing. We have a lot of different things going, but to try to complete the thing is always better than a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, because even right now we're in the situation with the patio. We have these sections of patio we just couldn't pour, and now we can't get concrete, so it has to push that that much farther back to be able to do it. Ideally, do it all at one time, be done with it, and, and it doesn't always happen, but that's kind of a life lesson, is when you're on something, stay on it till it's complete before you move on to the next thing if possible. We added the last six yards of concrete into the patio today, so our patio is done. And I have officially lost count on the amount of concrete that's in the project. I imagine we're at 130, I don't know, 140 yards maybe. Somewhere in there. Anyway, I'm officially have forgotten how much, but it's quite a bit. We did the last six today. The patio is now done. This pirate's finding a whole new home so today. So I am just touching up the old one of my old pirates from my collection I decided to put into the pool project, a little vignette. So I am cleaning them up a little bit. The amazing thing is if you make the color too perfect, it doesn't look right. So what we'll do is we'll kind of set them over there. Okay. We'll put some stuff around the base so you can't see the base so much. You tell me, what do you think? You look, uh, look like a fresh and clean pirate? Because to me, it kind of does. He's 
Existential father? Well, I heard them both yawn at the same time. That was like stereo. <laughs> so the, the slate that we use, it was a restoration project. University of Michigan. Yes. Do not tell Wendy. <laughs> Do not tell Wendy. Okay. <laughs> When it comes to the projects for Legendary Escapes, I make sure that the plant material fits the theme. This is one that's behind me, is like a canis, and it has got that tropical lush I'm Jody look. Cook, they also are. known as Ask the Garden Gal. I'm here on site I'm at the Pirate Pool for Legendary Escapes to check out the putting in the softening touches to finish the project. So. This is what As the Garden Girl's Suburban looks like when she doesn't bring the truck and trailer. Today is another glorious day at the Pirate Pool. So today we're doing some wrap up on our landscaping. Uh, we've done some edging, some stonework, put in our slate. Uh, a few things that we like to do is create maintenance free and that's why we use some stone, but also it is dense enough and heavy enough that it stays in place. I always love mulch because it's best for perennials and things that you use in the gardens, yet in a pool situation, that heavier stone is best. The biggest problem with anything smaller than that half inch or lower is it can get into your pool equipment, your filters can be kicked around a lot easier. The heavier stone, an inch or bigger, is again, heavier, dense, and will stay in place and still easy to walk on. <laughs> Early when this project started, at one of our meetings, we all wrote little notes for Anthony and Wendy and the girls, and we stuck them in this bottle. And then Sandy gave it to us about two weeks ago and said, put it somewhere. She said to bury it and mud, it in, mud this in and mud so that Anthony couldn't open it. But Anthony has already told us that if something's encased in glass, Oh, wow. Yeah, there's excitement every day. Would you have? And that's why we have. Oh, we're not going to embed wow. it. We're going to just kind of finagle it. And our ladder's going up here so that he's got to kind of puzzle the bottle out if he wants it. I have no clue. It's been, what, three months? I, think I pretended to be a pirate and said something about their backyard becoming my haven and hope it becomes something like that for them too. Ah. I learned how to do a skull countertop, which was really cool because Al had to create these molds and I have never seen or heard of him creating molds before. So this is the form for a countertop that, that is all skulls. So the face of the countertop in the outdoor kitchen will be skullicious. I have no idea, it just popped into my brain one day and I decided that I would figure out how to do something just drastically different with the countertop than anything I've done before. Beautiful. Pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. And then we'll peel it tomorrow. Here we are with the form that we made. This is our countertop edge. We made it out of silicone and I'm going to demold it. When you're casting, you always have to think about the opposite space than what's visually there. 
What I'm seeing is the negative space of what's actually going to be. It's the opposite space. Once, this, once we pour this into the countertop, these holes are now what are filled with concrete and create the shape of the skull. So you'll see that when we pour the countertop and then when we peel the mold, you'll see the actual uh, skulls done out of concrete along the edge of the countertop. No, this is just the form. And then we're going to pour it and when we peel it off, there'll be little skulls across the whole face. So it'll be like that. I think what we'll have to do, what we'll do when we pour it, is we'll hand pack that. I have to just literally hand pack and fill this whole thing with cement. And then this will be the very top of the form. What are you doing, Karen? <laughs> I am rolling and leveling kitchen countertop. Here we go. We're going to strip the form, see what happens. There's one. Here we go. Really? I'm so glad you're back. Dude, we're even awesomer than we think. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my God. You gotta impress yourself sometimes. Every once in a while, yeah. it, it kind of turns out cool. Yeah. See, Karen, we could have done this days ago. Yeah, we could have. <laughs> <laughs> but if it hadn't turned out, who would have gotten the uh. Well, you wouldn't have done it too many days ago. You really yeah. needed it to set. Yeah, oh yeah. But now do you have enough skulls in your yard? <laughs> no, no I don't. You could never have enough skulls. Good job, Jim. So here it is. There's our forms. They fit in. We popped them out. And there's a final detail on our bar edge. I think it turned out perfect. Couldn't have asked for any better. It looks, like, it looks amazing. No, no, we had never talked about it. And not until your dad brought the forms out that uh, he was like, hey, we're going to try this. And so, yeah, I mean, it was exciting. I forgot about that. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. We nailed it, guys. Good job, Karen. Yeah, good job unpacking. Well, here we are getting down to the final stages, the last little details. In a project like this, when you keep growing the details, they keep growing themselves. So every new idea spurs new ideas, which means more detail, more finish. But it really feels good to do it because the ultimate is the detail of the project and how cool it is to be able to visually see it, touch it, feel it, love it, and enjoy it, and then to get people's reaction. So we are taking a party bus from our pool guy headquarters out to the pirate shipwreck pool for the friends and family reveal. I anticipate this night being crazy cool for people to be able to see and feel and explore the pirate pool. I anticipate that we'll be getting a lot of people that are in shock and a little bit awed by what our team is able to put together. Um, what was your other question? Now we could just leave it as concrete. Oh, Loki just fell in the pool. Just get her, just get her out, just get her out.
<laughs> I am so special. It's a normal day looking for screws in a garbage bag, right, Gigi? You guys are weird. <laughs> <laughs>